because you are believing in it and who you're being at that moment. They see you as the energy you're projecting from the moment you walk in. The reason why I didn't say hi to Patsum the way normal people do, which is, how you doing, Patsum? is because he was excited dominant when I came into your house. So I cannot acknowledge him when he's being excited dominant. And you gave him a kiss. That's true. <laughs> Case closed. <laughs> when clients have trouble projecting leadership with their dog, Caesar encourages them to channel the energy of a person they associate with confidence and power. In an Italian, since you're Italian, leadership is everything. It is. <laughs> well, I suggest for her to just be Italian for a little while and, and create oh, this is what's going to happen. happen. And she starts saying that to herself instead of start feeding negativity to herself and start taking power away from her. So there's no Italian in her anymore. Ooh, this is hitting home for me. This is good. Who's your best role model? My mom. What's your mom's name? Nina. Nina. Because you got to go into that world. What about you? Who's your role model? Uh, if you don't have anybody in the family, you can yeah, always yeah. search uh, outside the family. Right. Yeah. Bruce Springsteen. Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, Bruce Springsteen. Yeah, I work with him. Yeah. Uh, you know, that's the boss. Yeah, exactly. That's his name. <gasps> that's the boss. That's right. That's that's right. Okay. I don't want you to become Bruce Springsteen. I just want you to use the energy. Some of his energy. So every time you go after Hudson, you got to put that in mind. Hudson, I am the boss. <laughs> I'm going to turn this on for a second. So, there, they, he said a lot in there, but I want you to know very clearly, if you can just relax and act as if, and you know teaching is an acting profession, profession, there's lots of research, lots of theory about this, but it is an acting profession. And if you can just calm and caring, make good eye contact, and know that you are in charge, the game is on. Kids are going to buy that, even if inside you're like, I don't know, I'm good right now. The most wonderful teacher I ever met in middle school in Hampton, Virginia, she had the at-risk population. Within our troubled little school, there was even the more exceptionally challenging kids. And she was um, a magician. And I will never forget, I was in her class, I was doing a project with them, and they were all over the place. And I was, had terrible classroom management. And she stood up. And as she looked at each person, it just went shh. And they got right quiet. And I was fascinated. I said, how'd you do that? What are you doing? She said, well, honestly, I was looking at them, thinking inside, I hope this works, because I had no idea what it's going to be. <laughs> and, 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 and it always did. She just always gave a look. She never raised her voice. Or she would say, I don't like that. And you need to stop. And they, they loved her. She was very loving. But you didn't mess with her. Um, and I kind of learned a lot from that because as, as a middle school teacher, I loved my kids dearly, but they were terrified of getting me angry. They'd say, what do you look like when you get angry? So the other thing is, it's just protected, projecting this energy. And this energy has, this quality has to do with just acting as if. There's a great article on TED Talk, a great talk on TED Talk, you might want to and it's about um, confidence building and, and nonverbal communication. And it's by, um, her last name is Cuddy, if you ever want to do it, if you ever want to Google it. But, and, and I think it does tie in, because he talks about how to walk the dogs. Do you remember? You know, they have to be right there and you have to be calm and walk along. Well, Cuddy, she talks about that what draws confidence in people. And she, they did research, and what they find is people who are confident have a little bit more testosterone, and they have a little less cortisol. And what she decided to do is do this research to find out if she could help people become more confident by asking them for two minutes a day in the privacy of their own home to do what she calls some power stances. That they're these nonverbal communications that indicate you feel powerful. Uh, one is the Wonder Woman or the Superman. Just putting your hands on your, your, your waist like this. Another one is sitting back with your hands behind your head and kind of relaxing. Another one is kids in Special Olympics who have never seen anybody and never had sight. When they cross the finish line after an event, they're like this. So this apparently just 
somehow, I don't know, is a celebration of power. So what they found out is if people just did this two minutes a day, one of those dances, their testosterone level rose, their confidence rose. And so I have student teachers, and you'll hear this again, so I'm sorry, but I have teachers who ended up with just walk around like this. And I swear it works. Why I'm, I'm wedding this to the dog whisperer, it's all about, it is all about your self-perception of your power. It's all about the perception that kids has as a result of that. If you're a person who glances and then quickly looks away, you know, a kid might scowl at you and you're kind of, you know, you don't know what to do, so you might look away. That shows that you're not the one that's kind of the pack leader. So I advise you right now, before you ever get into the classroom, learn to make really effective eye, eye uh, contact. You don't have to give them the evil eye. You just have to, and, and I would wait like one or two seconds because honestly, when I go down the hall, I'm constantly looking at kids. When I'm in the classroom observing, I try to help my student teachers by staring at kids when they're not acting right. They eventually see me staring at them and they go, and they'll stop whatever they're doing. And all it is is eye contact. So if you can learn to just be okay with making eye contact, it's part of that whole concert. So, and try to emulate. How do, you, how do you get that confidence? He's suggesting emulate the energy of other people. Don't try to be your fourth grade teacher who you're terrified of, but call on the energy of her. So I just want to show you a little more. How, I'm sorry to do this, but how are we doing on time again? 40. Okay. Let's go up the hill. Come on. First, Caesar demonstrates the power of a calm, assertive energy in managing the behavior of a dominant dog. Hudson must learn to respect boundaries when he is with Violet. Watch that, okay? He's coming over here. That's uh, right. Up the hill, go! I told him to go back. Oh. Oh my gosh, how did you do so that? So this, what do you mean? I'm projecting what I want. Okay. This way she feels safe. Yes. By him coming to, and now we're taking over. Now he's being the submissive one. Watch so the ears now. It's right. Like mine. Right. I mean, I'm really genuinely shocked that it happened so fast. I really, I'm, I'm speechless. You doing good? Are you happy to be here? Italian mom? <laughs> this is an unusual case because this dog is a very easy case. In a matter of seconds, he went from dominant to submissive, right? So they should take advantage of that. Now she's seeing that he's no longer being the bully that he normally is. They're he won't even come near. That's right. So that gives her access to feel safe. Does it look pathetic? Because the human is now taking over. Hudson was born to be a follower. That's why he gave the position right away. He didn't want the position. So he is not going to be Calvin ever. Right. And I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or your emotion. I'm just trying to for you. I just want to briefly say, because I think it's so important, a lot of the kids who percolate up to be bullies, a lot of times they were bullied. If you, if you give the right message of it's just not acceptable, I'm, I'm convinced that a lot of the kids who are bullies are just people who have em their emptiness inside. This is, this is their little attempt to try to get some sort of power. And if you can redo that and say, that's not acceptable, let me celebrate you this way, it will make all the difference in the world. Um, and the whole idea, again, of not, not meeting kids on their terms, but on your terms. Have you ever had talked to an adult and a little kid comes in and tries to you know, they pull on that stuff, and I'm talking, and she's like, and, yeah, and, yeah, and my name, my adventurous daughter, I love her, but man, she's used to being in control. And I'm speaking to Josh, and she's like, and, yeah, and, yeah, just one minute, just one minute, and, and I go, not now. Not, and I, then I'll make the conversation even longer, because I want her to know it's on my terms, I will talk to her. And I would argue that in a very short time, kids are going to get you. They really will, if you... Think about some of these strategies of becoming the calm sort of pack leader. What questions do you have? Do you have somebody here to bring in? No, I was going to finish this, but I'll tell you what. Oh, I just ejected it. I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> I was going to show you the, the uh, couch. The last one, if I could find, is Wendell. 
And I think, give me one second, he might be in that one. Because it's a real important this dog and and Caesar is trying to figure out what is going on that she's she is feeding into this very um, unstable dominant energy oh so that's odd. Three? yeah and, but it doesn't say which yeah I would say there's four in there well, I would go to 12 and see what happens No, let's go back. Go to the first one. Back again. Do it again. This one. All the way in the right corner. Can this marriage be saved? And I was watching it. Where's the phone? <laughs> okay, so let's move this forward to. I wanted you to see uh, someday. Uh, um, I wanted you to see the couch is totally ripped apart. I mean, for the previous one. The, yeah, there's no more. There's no more foam in the couch. With the, the Great Dane one. Yeah, the yeah. Great Dane one. Okay, so here are the two dogs. Oh, I muted uh, it again. One of them is a little uh, aggressive, sort of a pet bull, pet bull mix. Okay. And I just have big concerns about that moving into the house here. Uh, for safety reasons. Mm -hmm. So you have bad experience with pit bulls? Uh, I've had some experience with dogs, uh, irresponsible dog owners and dogs chasing around the neighborhood out there riding on a bike. You just hear lots of stories too about a particular breed of dog being a little aggressive too. But you said it right. It was, uh, you know, the owners. You okay? <laughs> See, because I did sense a little unsureness when you... Well, sure, yeah. Why? Because it just, uh, it's like snapping me a few times before and just seemingly for no reason, just sort of out of the blue, it seemed to just change. But are you unsure? I may have been sure based on my experience and, and what I know about the breed, the little I know. They don't hold down to the best the way we do. <laughs> this is a huge advantage they have. So a lot of times when people rescue dogs, people become emotional about, oh my God, I did a great thing, right? Which is a great thing, but the best thing you can do for a dog is to give them a leader right away. They're reading your energy, sure. So if you are like, hey... Okay, so... 